Since its inception in 2014, Peloton's rise was steady. However, in 2020, when unsurprisingly home fitness took off in a big way, for some reason, it became the most popular and recognizable home fitness service in the world. Despite its reputation for being a very expensive and overhyped service and the recent recall and reissue of Peloton treadmills, it doesn't really show any signs of slowing down. This review covers Bike, the entry-level Peloton exercise bike, along with the curated workout music slash social network slash fitness service as a whole, uh, which incorporates video spin classes on the bike, along with things like yoga, um, aerobics, strength training, and there are also audio-based outdoor running classes in podcast format, amongst many other things. Peloton now has a cult following with thousands of glowing endorsements and lives changed for the better. There's, the internet's full of stories about these improvements that were never achievable before and it's all down to Peloton. But is Peloton really that special? Perhaps more importantly, is Peloton worth your money? My name is Ian Buckley and this is the Make Use of Review of the Peloton bike and service. Before we go on, um, why should you care what I think about an exercise bike? Well, um, I've been a keen outdoor cyclist my entire life. I've also used stationary bikes for exercise and also for rehabilitation after injuries, but those things, look, those things aren't really all that important. What you need to know about me is that I am a cynical I'm a cynical person, all right? Um, I, I am an exercise enthusiast, but I am an antisocial exerciser. I do not like commercial gyms. Um, I switched to bodyweight fitness so I wouldn't have to be around other people. That's also why I run. I've been uncomfortable in every spin class I've attended, and while Peloton's advertising casts a very wide net, it does seem to be perfectly tailored for me. Despite this, I began this re review with a marked feeling of cynicism, and you would be right to think that's not ideal in a reviewer, but it does mean that you can rest assured that any positive opinions I have about Peloton as a uh, service were earned and not preconceived. This was not a fleeting review either. I have been using this bike for three full months, along with everything the Peloton app offers other than the treadmill workouts. Peloton has become one of those things where it is impossible to separate the experience uh, from the community surrounding it um, and the product itself. They're just all so intertwined, but this review tries to simply show what it is like to get and use a bike. So the bike itself, it is a flywheel stationary bike that uses magnetic resistance. Um, this makes it incredibly quiet in operation. Um, if you are on the bike using headphones only, your breathing would be the loudest sound um, that anyone else could hear, um, at least until you unclipped your feet from the pedals. The bike is adjustable to fit pretty much all sizes um, and the app guides you through setting it up um, on screen and how to adjust it for yourself. Um, you really want to do that right. Um, all this adjustment is done completely by hand. There's no tools needed to do that. Um, and the frame also has a, a couple of drink holders in the front here and a metal little hol holster at the back for uh, these light weights, which we'll come on to later. Peloton bikes use Look Delta cleats, um, which are a system a little bit different to SPD cleats, if you know them. Uh, they also have Peloton branded Delta compatible shoes, uh, though these do need to be purchased separately from the bike or as part of a bundle. The shoes are comfortable and feel, st uh, feel sturdy. Um, I was advised to go up one size from my regular shoes and that seemed to give a good fit. Used offline, as it were, not plugged into the wall, the bike feels just like any other flywheel bike and has a mechanical handle here to change the magnet position and therefore resistance. Note that this is not the same on the Bike Plus, the even more premium bike from Peloton, um, and we'll come on to other differences later. Uh, the seat, uh, which has a reputation for being uncomfortable, is a typical mid-width uh, mid composite saddle, and I found it to be perfectly comfortable um, once I got it in the right position, but padded shorts may be worth an investment for some people, I am sure. On the digital side, uh, this is a 21-inch Android tablet, essentially, but it has a customized version of Android 7 on it that can only run the Peloton app. That's very important. Um, that's the only thing you can do. There's no way of adding your own apps, no Play Store, and uh, you're not supposed to do third-party loading, APKs, all that kind of stuff. If you're looking for a bike you can watch Netflix on, then Peloton is just not the service for you. 
The screen is a multi-touch 1080p display. It is bright. The quality is good enough for everything that Peloton is offering. Um, and the built-in microphone and webcam are also perfectly fine for um, having uh, video calls. That's something you do within the Peloton app when you're taking classes with friends. The sensors feed from the pedals um, and the rest of the bike into the tablet to give you cadence and resistance um, and an overall power metric, which you get in real time during your workouts. Uh, this is central to the Peloton experience. Um, in use, the tablet felt snappy, there was no stuttering, um, and while the two rear-facing 10-watt speakers aren't really anything to write home about, they do get the job done. That said, I think I only used them twice as I spent most of my time paired with a set of simple sport Bluetooth headphones that I spent about 15 euros on. Um, you can also cast from the tablet. Uh, you can cast to Chromecast, Miracast, various uh, other things. And they support these cool little ANT plus heart rate monitors, um, as well as regular Bluetooth heart rate monitors. The app is also available um, on Android and Android TV and iOS, Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and a few others. Um, it's also available in the browser. So it gives you plenty of options for where and how you take the non-bike classes, of which there are many. But there isn't actually an awful lot to say about the tablet itself, although one of the differences between the Bike and the Bike Plus is the tablet, so maybe let's look at that now. The Bike Plus is an upgraded version of the original Peloton bike, and its base cost is $2,495, which at the time of filming is a full $1,000 more than this bike. And that $1,000 doesn't get you all that much, in my opinion. The two largest differences are Apple Gym Kit integration and a new digital resistance system that can be controlled remotely and replaces the mechanical dial you have here. Um, it replaces it with a digital rotary encoder, I think. Now, the former is only a big deal if you are locked into Apple products already, and I say this with genuinely no shade whatsoever. If that's the case, you are probably used to paying a premium for your technology compared to other people anyhow. So maybe the Bike Plus isn't too much of a big deal. Um, but the second thing, the auto-following digital resistance dial, is a cool idea, but it is only available for on-demand classes, so not live ones. And I don't really see how changing your own resistance breaks the immersion, but maybe that's just me. One side note here, this bike will always work. Even if the system collapses, the app gets deleted somehow, even if the power goes out in this flat, it's just a stationary bike uh, with a mechanical handle. I'm not sure if the rotary encoder of the Bike Plus works like that. Other than that, the differences with the Bike Plus are a larger touchscreen with better speakers and a swivel mount so you can turn it for yoga and strength work, um, and it has a slightly beefier processor with more RAM, not that I noticed any issue with this one at all. If money is no object, get the Bike Plus. Um, but with the difference in price now being so high, it's something that I personally would find pretty hard to justify. Central to the Peloton experience is the Peloton app. The tablet runs um, the app as a skin on top of the operating system and you use it for absolutely everything. Uh, finding and selecting classes, following your progress, um, searching for friends either through Facebook or via username and you can start calls with them and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can also find like-minded groups through tags which is a Peloton's hashtag-like descriptor system for helping find small communities. Um, and uh, you, I mean, you could not use the app on your phone ever and you'd lose nothing in the experience. You could do everything through this. Um, it is optimized for the bike, but that said, I found myself using the Android app a lot more for anything like yoga, uh, strength training, as it meant I could actually do it um, in downstairs in the flat. Um, the Peloton app itself comes with a couple of different access levels. There is a digital membership and that is not for the Peloton bike, that is just for certain classes. It is a single user experience uh, with no progress tracking. I think it is worth the $12.99 per month as you do get quite a lot of content uh, for the price, but it's just not relevant to the, to the bike. But the all access membership is $39 a month, which let's be real, is not cheap. And it's also a requirement for all Peloton hardware on top of the price. That said, all access membership is per household, so every member of your family could have their own individual user profile on the one bike, track their own progress, store their own favorite music and rides under a single membership. Um, so yeah, your mileage may vary. But the app offers everything that the service provides, but we haven't really covered what Peloton actually offers. The Peloton experience is slick. This bike was delivered and installed to my fifth floor flat, uh, which does not have an elevator, and the, the delivery folks came, set everything up, and gave me a brief introduction to how the bike works um, and the shoes as well. After making an account, I was able to choose uh, from the whole Peloton library. Both the live classes and on-demand rides do have a very similar feel. Uh, you clip in and you start the class. A charismatic instructor will welcome you to the session in English or German if you live there, um, and uh, as I do, and Spanish classes uh, are on the way soon. It was announced earlier this year. I don't think they are live yet. 
Um, and there'll be some information from the instructor as to what you'll be doing in terms of intensity or speed of their so-called hill climbs and things like that. Uh, there's also basic information as to how you can use the bike, maybe a little information on what music choices are coming up. Uh, maybe that's the theme of the ride. Depending on how you feel, uh, you can sign up for an almost militaristic, but you know, with a few smiles of encouragement, hardcore no mercy ride to make you better. Or you can choose the big Frida ride and party to the sound of the Queen of New Orleans bounce. Maybe you just need a pep talk. Maybe you got a big meeting coming up and you need some confidence for a big day. Peloton has all of this. And while not all of it was relevant to me, a surprising amount of it was effective in the context of exercise, something I'm gonna say this very often, I did not expect. But regardless of all that, each session follows a similar curve. There is a leaderboard on the right-hand side of the screen and it shows you who is riding with you. Um, and you can tap on people's names and give virtual high fives that will show up as a little notification on their screen with a prompt to give you a high five back. Uh, the leaderboards also let you see uh, where you lie in terms of power. Are you at the top of the scale? Are you riding the fastest? This is a number generated from uh, how fast you're pedaling and how difficult it is to turn the flywheel because of the magnets. But these leaderboards can be filtered by age, by gender, by location, or by tag. The previously mentioned hashtagging system from Peloton for adding these identifiers. Um, it's a small social element, but it is definitely enough to make you feel like you're actually doing something as a group uh, without actually having to be in a group. It's convenient. But you can also just turn it all off and pretend it's just you and the instructor. Almost. Now, each Peloton instructor is different. They have their own personalities, but the classes follow similar structures, which is presumably decided by the Peloton company. Um, all the usual spin class elements are there, a descriptor of what is about to happen, encouragement to keep pushing, push harder, dig deep, all that stuff. Um, but alongside this is the occasional shout out for riders who are passing a milestone. So-and-so's what 100 rides today, this person's done 500 rides today, or maybe it's just their birthday. Knowing this would happen, I was a bit concerned it would be grating, but I didn't actually find it a problem. And to be perfectly honest, getting a birthday shout out gave me more of a boost than I envisioned. Maybe that was just the endorphins. Music for Peloton classes is a serious business and it is curated. It plays automatically in the background with the option to favorite tracks during that ride that will show up as a playlist in any linked Spotify account, which is a nice touch. Um, one nice feature is the option to change the sound balance. If you want to hear less instructor and more music, uh, you can. There's an option for that in the volume menu and vice versa. It's balanced enough you can always hear both, but it gives more flexibility than a simple volume control would give. Nice touch. The end of each class comprises a quick warm down and stretch and almost always some kind of affirmation to take with you. Um, along with prompts to rate the class or favorite it or maybe go straight to another low intensity class for a cool down. Uh, the idea is to keep you in there, but you can leave there too. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much the entire Peloton experience. And I knew this going in. It's worth pointing out at this stage that Peloton isn't easy. Um, it's not an easy option for people who want to have a cushy workout at home. Even the less intense workouts were quite difficult. And I'm not trying to make out that I'm some kind of super fit person here, but I run ultra marathons. I exercise every day. Uh, some of the hardest workouts I've had in the last few months have been on this bike. I did not expect that at all. Um, my initial cynicism died down almost immediately. In the comfort of my own attic with no other people around me, it just nothing but me and my intention to see a class through with the instructor. And I got it. I, I, I get it. The whole thing feels focused, smooth, um, and other than the actual hard exercise element of it, easy. Um, I struggle to find a better word than easy here. I could have said it's effortless, uh, an effortless thing, but again, that, that overshadows the actual effort you put in on the bike, which is a lot. The point is, Peloton classes are designed simply to make you work hard and feel good about it, um, as a virtual group or alone, and in three full months, they've managed to achieve that with almost every ride I took. Alongside the general rides, there are focused classes uh, for working in heart rate zones. There are multi-part classes to learn about key workout concepts, both on and off the bike. Um, everything from improving your riding technique to uh, running a marathon, or even learning to sleep better. Where the service deviates is with the nature rides. Um, these are pre-recorded videos of various locations that move at your speed. These would have been wonderful, but they have music too that you cannot turn off. Peloton, you recorded a ride through Pupukia Forest on Hawaii and played Snoop Dogg over the top of it. Yeah, this bit just sucks. There's, no, there's nothing more to say. There's also a sort of rhythm rider game coming up too, but at the time of making this review, the beta program hasn't been so, uh, rolled out yet. It does look kind of cool, and it looks like Peloton is maybe looking at dipping their toes into more gamified workouts. It'll be interesting to see where that one goes. 
Ultimately, the rides I described at the start of this section are the core of the Peloton bike experience. In short, it's great if you like the format, and surprisingly, I did. The experience is slick, but from a distance, there are some very obvious limitations here. As previously mentioned, the bike is for Peloton and Peloton alone. Depending on who you are, that could be seen as a positive, a focused experience in a world of constant distractions. I get that, and in fact, I'm actually someone who thinks that, but I still concede that when bikes of a similar value or cheaper are feature-packed with streaming services and all digital mod cons, that seems like a glaring omission. But a much heavier limitation, in my opinion, comes from the core design of Peloton hardware and services. Something this expensive, only having one use case, is good focus, sure but it also really doesn't give much in terms of security and flexibility. If Peloton as a company folded, let's say due to a poor product launch and maybe some lawsuits, just spitballing here, what happens to your hardware? This brings me back around to my initial questions. Is the Peloton hype justified and is it worth your money? Well, at $1,495 for the base bike, it's expensive, there's no doubt. There are other bikes that mechanically do what this bike does uh, cheaper and there are some similarly priced ones that offer extra things like actual simulated hill climbing, uh, some different adjustments, leaning for core workouts. There's a lot of options out there. And of course, other bikes allow you to use services like Netflix and Hulu um, and Disney Plus, whatever you want, whereas Peloton lets you do Peloton. Now, the Bike Essentials packet uh, adds uh, shoes, it adds these lightweights I mentioned before, um, and uh, Bluetooth headphones with an extra $150 price tag on top. But this is completely optional. If you have your own set of headphones, your own set of Look Delta compatible shoes, you don't need them. Um, there's even more expensive packages which add more weights and Peloton branded items, which again are all optional. Surprisingly, when I costed some of these out, they weren't quite as eye-wateringly overpriced as I first assumed and other people have claimed. But yeah, that said, uh, there's still no way of getting away from it. This is a very expensive thing, and it has a very high monthly maintenance cost. When you consider the initial outlay for the bike, um, along with the $39 per month all access membership, it still can be a little bit hard to see why so many people think it is worth the money, and the answer lies in the service itself. While pricey, Peloton delivers exactly what they advertise. If Peloton has generated hype, it has done so by creating a fitness service that people truly engage with, regardless of previous exercise experiences. And there's no statistics to back that up at all, but it does certainly seem like people who struggled with discipline to exercise at home or didn't feel comfortable in gyms or whatever reason um, have had these life-changing experiences with Peloton and managed to stick with it for hundreds and sometimes thousands of rides. There's no way that that kind of commitment cannot be a completely transformative event in a positive way in someone's life. Um, Peloton managed this by selecting instructors people bond with, who not only exude personality, um, but structure classes to challenge a wide range of users. It accommodates uh, more than just pure fitness-based content. I think the starkest example of this is the themed rides I mentioned before. They're designed to either bolster confidence or simply acknowledge difficult feelings, sometimes they're about music or special days. It might seem like a jarring combination, you know, like emotional engagement and spin classes, but people have strong emotional responses to this. Uh, there's accounts of people having a really good cathartic cry on their bike, and regardless of what you think of that, again, that's a good transformative experience. People have class preferences, yes, but people really have favorite instructors, to the point that when two of the most popular Peloton instructors recently announced their engagement, it was treated as celebrity news. It showed up in my Google News thingy. Um, users come back to the bike to check in with someone they feel like they know, and while intellectually I'm sure it's clear that this is a person speaking to a massive crowd, um, you do feel a bond. I felt a bond. There's something I did not expect to feel at all, because I am a cynical <laughs> They've also managed to create a social system that treads the line between all being on the same team and uh, being in some kind of friendly competition, all while making it very easy to simply just dismiss it and not take part if you just don't feel like it on that day or at all. Regardless of what it looks like from the outside, from within, Peloton feels every bit as dynamic as the glowing testimonials make it out to be. As surprised as I am to find myself saying this, Peloton does feel like it has earned the hype. It is worth it. So is Peloton right for you? Um, pff, this has not been an easy review to structure. Like, ultimately, this is still a very expensive flywheel exercise bike. It's, it's a pretty nice one, but it's, it's, a, it's a bike with an Android tablet bolted onto it. And that tablet can only do one thing. Um, and obviously I've avoided in this review the fact that uh, Peloton as a brand is not in a good place right now. There was uh, catastrophic and tragic failures with the Peloton tread rollout. And despite the reissue, it's hard to blame anyone to having a more cynical view 
uh, about Peloton right now. But that's got nothing to do with the instructors or the community surrounding other Peloton products. It's a tricky one, really. Um, but in this experience with the Peloton service, it managed to be both the garish hype train I expected it to be, um, while simultaneously nailing the concept of at home with others, funneled neatly into a structured progress-based workout system. It is a big investment, and it's far from as perfect as the super Peloton fans would have you believe. But uh, yeah, if you are looking for a lifestyle-changing piece of kit, it's very hard to think of anything offering exactly what Peloton is at this stage. Oh, I hope you can't hear that. That's a horrific drill. Just as a footnote to this review, um, towards the end of my time reviewing the bike, I just wanted to check I wasn't crazy, and I contacted a local gym and asked about their pricing. Now, adding up the base membership cost of the gym, along with the additional cost of certain classes, spin classes and, and other ones, you know, the monthly cost came to around $10 more than a Peloton all-access membership after conversion. This is, of course, not a fair comparison. Gyms have weights, machines, treadmills, and bikes that you don't have to buy. Um, but by the same token, Peloton has never actually claimed to be a replacement for commercial gyms. Although the implication was clearly there, especially over the past year or so, for some reason. Regardless, there is one thing that a public gym can't do, um, and that is be in my house um, and allow me to engage exactly how much I want with it in complete privacy. I'm not interested in following my favorite instructors on Instagram and I don't listen to the Peloton podcasts. Yes, they exist, multiple, <laughs> but I understand why other people do. And frankly, those people are probably getting way more out of this service than I am. Uh, incidentally, as you've probably been able to hear through this review, I'm pretty sick right now. Um, good luck going to a public gym these days, sniffing and sneezing without upsetting the locals. <laughs> no, I started this review expecting to be disappointed by an overhyped and overpriced product. I have been pleasantly surprised at every turn. Uh, thank you so much for watching this review. If you're not already subscribed to the Make Use Of YouTube channel, do give it a subscription. There is a written version of this review you can find on the Make Use Of website if you head to our product reviews section. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Thanks for watching.